Today we've got Pepsi here. Pepsi's a, a very lovely old doggy who came in uh, for a dental cleaning. But um, on the pre-operative bloods, we picked up that she's got a problem with her kidneys. So she's got chronic uh, kidney disease. Um, she's absolutely fine in herself. She's just old. But we certainly didn't proceed with the dental today because we wanted to do some more tests to try and understand how her kidneys are working and um, if there's things that we can do to help her feel better and um, make sure that we minimize the risk that she may have undergoing anesthetic. So one of the things that we do when we've established that there's a problem with the kidneys involves firstly you know, checking bloods and uh, the urine concentration. But when we know that the kidneys are not working like we want to, one of the things we do with dogs and cats is check their blood pressure. So basically this video is to show you how we do that. So here we have um, the blood pressure machine. It's an oscillometric machine, which means it me measures blood pressure in a way similarly to what I guess most of you would be used to when you go to the doctor. Um, basically when, when we go, we get a cuff put on our arm, they press a button and it swells up and squashes your arm and eventually after a few seconds spits out some values. These were the first values that spat out of her reading and this is the cuff on her leg here and it's all connected this way. And uh, these two values, we have a systolic and a diastolic value. The systolic value is uh, basically related to the pressure when the heart is contracting and the diastolic value is related to the pressure when the heart's relaxing. And just like you'd hear your doctor say, oh, your blood pressure is 110 over 70 or 120 over 80. In this case, on this reading alone, her pressure was 153 over 94, which as an isolated reading is a little bit too high. Um, but because so many things can go into reading blood pressures with people and with dogs, but dogs particularly, you can see that she's a little bit nervous and you can see she's shaking a little bit because she's a little bit wondering what are we doing and why are we squeezing her leg and why is she at the vet when she should be at home with her mom lying in the sun. So she's a little bit stressed and then these can affect the readings and make them higher than they should be. So we have to do a couple of them. So I'm going to press this little button again and it'll think about what it's doing and hopefully give me a value that makes some sense. And all the time we, we have to sit here and stroke her and talk to her and tell her that we aren't hurting her and that life is not so terrible. It's also why I've got uh, Camille standing here to be the loving attention seeking person if for some reason she wants to get off the table or I have to do something with the machine. Here we have a slightly different reading, 149 over 94, still a little bit high but Okay, that's good. At least it's basically consistent to the 154 that we had before. So I'm going to press it again and do another reading. And it's always important with blood pressure measurements to do seri a series of measurements um, to try and get an average reading. Um, and if you, have a very, if you have a very high or very low value, you discard those and you basically take the mean value of the readings that have made sense. And then based on that, you still need to repeat those over time. So... Currently, my thinking is she's 153 over 93 again. She's at the top end of a range of where we would start thinking about giving her medication for her kidneys for blood pressure because persistently elevated blood pressure can damage kidneys or harm kidneys. And as we know, her kidneys are already struggling. Blood pressure medications could help actually make them last longer. So we're probably going to get her back in a couple of weeks and recheck the blood pressure again. And... Um, based on those readings decide whether medication would need adjusting or not but yeah she's trembling and shaking and she's a little bit stressed out but all in all being very good um, sometimes taking measurements on cats and dogs that are very very anxious is almost impossible and you have to really really be quiet patient sometimes put them in a dark room relax and um, try and get them to be as absolutely chilled as possible before you can take measurements that mean things. Because if a, a cat or a dog is very, very highly stressed, um, the values can be falsely elevated. So we do our best to try and get an understanding of what is going on because, you know, we can't talk to our patients and tell them, please take a deep breath, relax, I need to, you know, like you can if you're a human patient. So that's, you know, taking a blood pressure and getting a, a reading that means something is one of the challenges that you face when you're a vet because you can't actually communicate with your patient and tell them that the sky isn't about to fall on their heads.